whatever you decide on what you're going to do to the code, that's your plan. But stop it spreading anyway. Whatever about treating and everything else, mitigate against the spread. Now, whether that's a cluster dip, whether it's a cluster flush as you have it, and you make sure it's working. Hello, I'm Stuart Childs, and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights, and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. Figures from AHI earlier this year have seen the national average bulk tank SCC rise again in 2022. While the increase from 2021 is small, it is the third consecutive year that the figure has risen, coming in at 183,000 for 2022. Milk processors have a target of 80% of their milk supply to be less than 200,000 by 2025, and currently there is huge variation among processors ranging from 45 to 75%. Controlling SCC is important at all stages of lactation, but staying in control of it during the mid-lactation period is key to maintaining a good SCC for the year. So I asked Dan Crowley, milk quality specialist with Chagask, to tell me what he's seeing on the ground at the moment and what advice he has for managing SCC mid-season. It's been an issue this spring, all right, and there's been a good overhang from last year. Look, there's no doubt about it. The milk price has caused an issue from last year to this year where cows... It didn't pay for farmers to go after bonuses, let's say. So they financially or it didn't cost them, I suppose. It didn't it? cost them, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, the visual cost. There yeah. was a hidden cost that they didn't see and they're paying the price a little bit now for it. But a lot of that milk went into the bull tank and in because of the 60, 70, 80 centiliter they got in the back end, whatever it was. But it, it, there's an overhang of that into this spring. And as farmers, we need to be very careful because with these type of infections and as infection builds inside. So basically what you're doing is when you reset the clock in an infection in a herd, in a seasonal calving herd like we do, we reset the clock by two ways, our antibiotic and trichotherapy and our culling. So we, we're culling chronic animals that are reservoirs of infection. We're moving them out of the system and we're resetting the clock then with antibiotics on the more less infected animals. So we're starting then on a fresh basis the following spring. So if we keep a lot of these chronic infected cows from uh, from winter to spring, infection rate is building, they're impacting on our first calvers, they're destroying the future potential of the herd, and you can see the whole thing building up as a cascade. And we're seeing the stats of that now this year. So it's an important year for fellas to re and ladies and farmers to, to reset the clock or be very careful this year. I would be saying to farmers from looking at profiles I'm seeing. So you're dead right, we've the lads that are milk, the farmers that are milk recording, probably a lot of them have two done out at this stage, right? So we'll talk about that cohort of farmers. My two milk gardens are back or on the way back. What's the first thing that I look at? The first thing I will look at any is I don't go looking at who's the highest cow or nothing like that. I go into my cell check report sheet and I look at the new infection rate and the persistent infection rate, right? This is under the mastitis control in the front page. So I'm looking at how many cows have I got that are persistent. I want to see is that under 8%. It's slowing 8 in every 100 to be wrong. And more importantly, is it spreading? How many new infected cows are? So the new infection rate means cows that were under 200 the last recording, how many of them are high this recording, which is over 200? We're trying to keep that at under 7%. That's the critical thing. You've got to keep looking at that right through the period. So because From recording to recording, basically, recording want to be to what, so, am I getting worse? <clears throat> really is, is what that's telling you, is it? So we all have high cell count cows. So the, what your point is, you're trying to do, am I containing it? Yeah. If I'm milking my 100 cows and I have 10 problem cows, well, at least there's 90, plus or minus a couple. There'll be a bit of flu, fluctuation, but there's 90, 85 to 90, 85 to 90, 85, give or take. So at least I'm containing it. Contain it and contain it. And that's the first trick. That... You know, to, so if I get next thing now is what you're looking at then is, is so you're, is it, is it spreading? So if it's spreading, where do you see that? You generally, where you'll see that now is when you go to your problem cow sheet and you'll see the five cows that were high the last time, it is a different five or high this time. So it's happening around the place. It's okay, you know, so I was taking out three or four cows for calves. And when I look at the milk account, Jesus, I should be taking out these five instead of the last five. And I, I wasn't getting the bounce in the bull tank that I, I, I should be getting, you know. In general, for, and I, I'll just say the statement because I, I forgot, for the people that are not milk recording or even milk recording, if, if you have a good cell count, but it fluctuates up and down from collection to collection. So I'm, I'm when I'm saying good cell count, 
me 80 to 120, 130. And I could periodically go up to 220, 230 and back down again with nothing done. Invariably, there's one or two causes causing that issue. You know, and, and if you move early, you can really steady the ship with them. You know? Is that the staff infection, Dan, then that's yeah. kind of shedding that's causing that spike, is it? It is. It is generally. It's generally staph aureus. And the reason why we're happening about this, you know, our conversation today about the staph aureus is we've reset the clock and clock in the springtime with our dry cow and a little bit of culling. The culling hasn't done as much as we should. So it's more infection rate. These are spreading. And what you'll see in the graph that they have in the new infection rate, it's rising away as the season goes on. Do you know? So coming September starts to rise, August, September starts to rise away. And generally what you'll see is if people look at this, the rise will start, start earlier every year. So instead of starting in August, September, to start June, July, to start May, June, to the point of where you're nearly calving down, if you don't control that um, infection and the culling. And, and I suppose we should say it now from the point of the culling, you know, just the point, because we had this conversation before started. The decision on culling people is should be made now in the sense of don't breed them. This is the problem. We're breeding, they're going in calf. And when it comes to next, the bull is pulled in the July start of August, whenever you pull them. Next thing this cow is in calf, I my 10% not in calf, and she said, I don't want to get rid of her and blah, blah, blah. And they live in the system. Yeah. They only, they like, if the conscious decision of the five, six, seven cows or whatever it is in your herd that are chronic, that you want to say, look, they should get the road. Now is the time to make that decision. Milk them. If you want to try and get the season, we'll talk about mitigating against that. But don't put them in calf. And Don, what's uh, we'll say uh, talk talk us through the the how we how we deciding which ones we're not going to breed. So we'll say cow calved in April per, or sorry February has had a perfect sale count all last year and is now a millionaire or two millionaire double millionaire. What we'd all love to be ourselves, but uh, financially speaking. But uh, um, what's the like is she one for the road or is it the one that was bad all last year that's after Kevin down and maybe had an okay first recording but he's gone bad now in the second recording type scenario or what are you looking at like? So there's a picking order. So that la- that co you described there, how you are last season, the first one was good. No bad as, as she ever was. She's a chronic co. Why? So what happened was she was bad all last year, a chronic staph aureus. There's an abscess inside the other. The, anti- the antibiotic kills everything around the, an- the dry co antibiotic kills everything around the abscess. She calves down very good. You think, correctly, we've done the job here. And next thing, then, month, six weeks later, the abscess is ruptured and she's back to where she was. So that cow needs to be called. The second cow that needs to be called is the cow that has a clot in the first pull or two and then the milk is fine. And it'll go away for a week or 10 days and then come back. And um, if I milk a card her when the clot isn't there, she can look very good. Whereas if I milk her with the clot, she's a chronic cow as well. She needs to get the road. Cow with the fuller quarter, they need to get the road. Um, and we'll talk about other options with them as well. But the cow that you described first, where she were very good last year, but they calved down poor this year, you know, or they're poor now. Mm. I'd be reserving judgment on them. Two reasons you look at is parity, age. Second thing is, what are you dealing with? Is it a staff or is it a strip? Just cause it, because that'll give you... Uh, what, uh, you know, if it's a strip, definitely worth treating him. If it's a staff, if the A parity is with her, if you can pat her away with her, the dry coat could see after like him up to third, fourth lactation cows, you know. So, and then I'm coming back to the other cows that are problem quarters, problem quarters. You have the option of drawing quarters off if you want to. Mm-hmm. The drawing the quarters off is it's tricky, but it's something. We're probably a little bit early yet in the sense of peak yield. Well, cows are still milking well, so, and they're not really going in calf. It's really the end of May, start of June, when you're looking at this as an option, realistically. You know, sorry, the end of June, start of July. And um, so, basically, if it's a cow that's wrong in one quarter, of a cow, she's three or four million, she's wrong in one quarter, back right, I'll shut that quarter down. Number one, what's the practicalities of that? If I have multiple milkers, you can't have it. Number two, how do I do that? If she's wrong in two or more quarters, you just shut the cow down, get, get rid of her. If, you know, if, it's easy to shut the cow down, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, that's an easy one. You're dead right. It is yeah. the shutting the quarter down. And really, when you're making that decision, 
about shutting the quarter down, you have to look at your own practices. Look, think though, it is the end of June, start of July, you're going to do this. There's potential going off and hold this. Mm-hmm. You're going to shut them down quarters. You're expecting a milk cart to come in now and remember not to put a cluster on these quarters. Are you doing all the milk yourself? Have you two or three flags milking? Are you taking weekends off? All this kind of crack. Yeah. Just the real practicalities of it. But if if you think it is a runner and you want to say, look, this is a good call, I don't want to get rid of her. Um, the best way I've seen of shutting the quarter down is basically milk your as a three quarter co for three milkings. And on the fourth milking, you milk her as a four quarter co and you dump that milk. And you do that for three to four cycles like that. And the quarter will lighten away down, then just stop. And when you say three to four cycles, now you're talking about uh, milking for three days or three milkings and three quarters for fourth milking. So that's a two day cycle. So over six, over the course of a week, basically, you're going to. And then you just stop milking that quarter, then afterwards cycle. So uh, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Same again for two more rounds. And after you've milked it out on that four, on that third time, don't milk it again. Yeah. And, and you make that call. That call, now whether you go again, is made on, on the type of code. But the reason why it's a nice system is, number one, you're getting the code to shut herself down gradually. Number two, you're making sure she doesn't get clinically sick with us, you know, that, that there isn't just, you know, uh, and um, uh, number three then is is just, you know, just the winding down of it is just not as severe and then like, but once they're over peak, it's, look, it works well, it works well, it's a handy option. And are there any cows, we'll say, that they've fulfilled all your criteria there from the point of view of age and that the potential is there from to actually maybe come good again, that you wouldn't do that to, like is there we'll say so that's is this only a case of a subclinical mastitis where you've no clinical case associated with it and she's just a high cell count cow or is it a cow that has had cases of mastitis maybe during the, the lactation so far or are there any criteria that people should be thinking of there like because the thing i suppose that worries people about doing what you're suggesting there is the breakout isn't it the one where they'll develop that lump that you're talking about which is the abscess obviously high up in the other arm or quite often you'll see it on the side of the other as well and obviously with rubbing and and just over time it ripens as such and it bursts out and people are worried about the the effect that that can potentially have as well um as well as obviously during the summer then you flies and everything going on so are there cows that you just shouldn't do it to the cows that get that now are the abscess cows, the real chronic cows, you know. So, like, the ideal cow, to be honest, to do it is you have a high cell count cow. You look at the other one when she's milked out. She's milked out perfect. You know, the, the, she's a cell count, three, four, five million. But when you yeah. look at this cow being milked out, you couldn't tell the difference in it. Bar, you did your cell count on it. They work very well. And there's a high probability that though, a lot of those quarters can come back perfect the next spring you know what I mean being a healer type scenario like. healer type scenario and time and you know it, it depends on the bug it depends on the damage and all this but you see the rupturing of the other that's mother nature's way of just dealing with the abscess and it gives cows great relief when that happens and farmers know that they see that themselves it's not visibly the nicest thing to see but it gives the cow fierce relief and um, the fly thing is, is is the issue coming into that time of the year you know with it mm. with it and Realistically, those type of cows, like if 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 there's something that you're saying, look, I'm worried about it, and this has happened before, and stuff like that, and stuff. Really, you have to consider calling that cow, like because yeah. there's such a reservoir for infection, and the way cow cow prices are at the moment, the way I'd be taking the fellas, if I'm looking at my stock, the fellas are tight now for winter feed. Mm-hmm. If you look at a lot of clients we're looking at, right? Feed is not cheap, it's dear at the moment, right? And cow cow prices are strong. Grass is good to tight, good to tight, not abundant, but good to tight is around the go of it from the gen- from the groups I'm talking. So, like, when you put it all in the pack together, the financial thing is, I, I think this should, people should really seriously consider a lot of calling a lot of these goals. I'm not talking, they're, they're, they're probably not big numbers. I might, yeah, yeah, two, three, three, four goals, like one or two in a hundred. Types one, of terror, exactly. Man. You know, yeah. I'm not talking half a herd going out, I'm only talking two, three, four, five, depending on the scale of the herd. But, it can make things very simple for people. For people, they should really, really, really look at that option. Like you know, because um, yeah. these um, cows, these cows are doing lateric. Generally speaking, like you said, people are very slow to do it, uh, and I suppose they'd probably reach for the top shelf type scenario to try and treat the cow before they'll cull the cow. In a lot of cases, well, my point to the, the, the farmers listening in would be: 
Whatever you decide on what you're going to do to code, that's your plan. But stop it spreading anyway. Whatever about treating and everything else, mitigate against the spread. Now, whether that's a cluster dip, whether it's a cluster flush as you have it, and you make sure it's working. Like if a cluster flush is working, there should be 800 mils to a litre going out every cluster every time it's taken off. And a lot of the cluster flushes aren't working properly. And a fella should flush them into a bucket or them into a jug and check to make sure they're all working. If there's an, a unit, if there's a parlor that doesn't have that technology, and I five, six high cows, just dip the cluster in those five or six cows. If you're disciplined enough, which is very, very few, very five, one or two, that'll actually tag a cow, draft them out, and put them around to last. This, it sounds great, but it just won't happen. People just say, when the cow's there, I'm going to bloody milk her. I'm not going to yeah. run her back around again. She's taking up the uh, space, sir. She is, and she's eating again and trying to feed her, and I have piggy feeders, and how can I not feed her, and all this crack like, you know. Yeah. So, And you can see there are all the practical side to it. But the first thing is stop it spreading. The second thing, I, I would say, like, is from a treatment point of view, the first thing you need to know your enemy, right? And a policy we're trying to get farmers to do is to take a sample of every clinical case, okay? Now, that you say, crikey, here your man goes again. Like, what, what I'm basically getting at here is that if you could take a sample, let's say I milk my 100 cows, I get 15 to 20 cases during the year, and I put the sample bottles into the box of tubes, so every case I go up, I go up and I'll take a sample, I go in to get my tubes, the bottles in the way, and I'll pick up my sample, and I'll take my sample, put the cow number, the date, the quarter on it, and I'll freeze it. And I'll tube away mad, and then, uh, you know, but what I'm basically getting at is that by, if I have a strep problem, if I have a strep uber's problem, you treat away mad. And, and there's a lot of strep issues out there. We're seeing a lot of them. If you have a staph problem and the treatment thing that you're asking about is parity is a huge thing. Parity. And when you palpate the other and you feel a hardness or a fullness inside in the quarter, geez, lad, I, I, look, you can work. try it. You're just not going to work. Yeah, you know? yeah. and, and farmers know this themselves. Like They'll see this and... and a lot of the cases, you know, the, the efficacy of antibiotics and staph aureus, and the, they should talk to our vets, and this is probably around 30, 40 percent. That's the you'll cure one every three cases you get. Okay. Do you know? Yeah. So it, it, that's why you have to get them early and get them low. So you, you know, staph is a devil, like it's a, it's a, it's a tricky little devil. It, it's really mass, like E. coli. As I said to a lot of fellas, it'll kill the cow or kill the quarter. It's a self limiting disease. Staph war is just cuter than that, like. That's a very good point, Dodd, and because um, you said it there earlier about the, the sample bottle in the box of tubes and it kind of I went over my head there for a minute until you've explained it. So basically what you're saying is put your sampling bottles clo- next to your tubes, basically, so that when you go for the tube, you think you're taking the sample because invariably what people are doing is they go get the tube straight away and tube the cow and then it's like, oh, jeepers, I should have sampled her. Don't put them next to the box. Put them into the box. Because <laughs> if you don't take a sample, then that means you didn't bother your ass taking it. You know what I mean? The bottles have got to be in the way and there must be sterile bottles you got from the vet or the co-op. Not the sample bottles that you're doing, your fat and protein ones, because there's detergents inside in them. Okay. They're reused bottles. It must be sterile bottles. But and the other thing then, you see, if you it's just you take, if, if you didn't get a chance to go to the lab, and you're going to pick your dry coat. You could pick up your eight or ten samples and take them in and get them analyzed to pick the dry coat. Have your chat with your dry coat consult with your vet. The vet will look down through the profile of him. He'll see what he's doing. But he'll be able to tell you a lot about what's going on in your herd from looking at that profile. Like It's yeah. just, it's giant. That's... Okay, so sure, I suppose you've covered a lot of ground there. So, But just to summarize it, I suppose, then, Dan, the, what, what are the three key tips so, for people to stay on top of their cell count and obviously ideally try and, and have it in that sub 200 category my milk recording done I need to I know the high ones I'm stop. I'm prioritising stopping the spread right I'm going to take samples off cows now they're going to get it so I'm going to know my enemy right I am going to practice the three or four key things watch the liner change when I say teeth spray now and I hear a new great point in this Stuart well, put your hand in first but I mean dripping like they're washed with teeth dip for the next couple of months. It makes a huge difference. And 
like you see, you have two different approaches. You have approach if you have a staff, you have approach if you have a strip, and the strip for the lower cell count herds that are listening, these are cows, they're getting mass mastitis a day or two after bullying, they're getting very sick. It's a toxic strip they're getting. It looks like an E. coli, but there's actually a strip mastitis they're getting. And they need, if I miss her in the morning, I'm very sick go that evening. You're getting a nice bit of that now at the moment. I'm getting a lot of phone calls on it. And so that's clipping the tails, making sure the panel is working right. If there's teeth and damage, there's something maybe setting up in the palate. But the barrier dips where you're physically dipping with a cup is a huge, huge help for that type of mastitis, the strip. So my tips are, I have my cell count done, my new infection rate, my persistent, have I, I we all have high cell count codes, but is it holding? Is it spreading? The second thing then, if it's spreading, I need to address that spread by stopping the spread, which is cluster dipping, segregation, second herd, depending on your scale, you have all these options. But I need to identify my enemy. Samples taken hygienically. Like a bad sample is worse than no sample because mm. you're having a clue what you're doing. So, you know, so no, and sample bottle in the box of tubes and an appropriate treatment. Then, so when those the vet is coming, and our last point I would say is on all cases of clinical mastitis, anti inflammatories need to be used, especially the non steroidal, because if there's a cow and calf, the non steroidal is going to ma- ma- mind the calf, but to mind the pain and stop it and just all that, it's it's a it's a fantastic tool, and vets are really promoting it. Like. And, and uh, what about the rubs, Dan? Actually, I've heard several people talking about maybe applying the rubs as well. So the likes of your other mints and Masto Mint or whatever, there are various different names in there. They seemingly, they're kind of having an, uh, it's like a muscle rub almost, like it kind of opens up the, the, the channels within the other. That's not maybe a great way of describing it, but you know, it seems to be improving um, treatment efficacy is what the, I'm hearing back from some vets anyway. That- it's anecdotal. And the vets will be saying, look, what you're basically doing is, is like, you know, when you get a pull a hamster or your muscle injury in a match or something, you're using these type of products. They're basically promoting blood circulation. Yeah. So if the blood is circulating more, you're generating a heat, you're generating blood circulation without infl- inflammation. So usually we get heat through an inflammation. This heat now is generated to get blood circulation. So that blood circulation is, is taking basically flushing the toxins out of the system and helping the healing process, like, you know, it's allowing the defense mechanisms get to the area of contamination quicker, like, you know, and it's a, it is a help. It is a help. Maybe, I say sometimes, maybe maybe there's an over-reliance on it in the sense of not using it in conjunction with something else. Yes. But it's yeah, definitely yeah. a help. She's sure to, that massaging alone, you know, of it and, and rubbing it into the quarter, what you'd notice then, if you got strip you out the cow, you'll get more of the infection out, like, Notice that, like when you'd be rubbing into the quarter, and it's hard now. She's sore now, but when you go stripping her, then again, you know it's you know uh, you'll get more of the infection over again. You know. Okay, so then, so a, a comprehensive run through there as always in in relation to cell count. So, but it, it's it's key that people do act on this now and over the next couple of weeks in order to stay on top of it for the rest of the year. Mastitis is basically where you're paying for the sins of the past. You know, so. What's happening next September and October and cell count going a bit skew is that's happening now. Do you know what I mean? The lack of the lack of action no doesn't mean that I'm going to be in trouble next week or the week after, or I'll be in trouble in August, September. And farmers know the money in the business comes. I've everyone paid up to September. From September on is mine and the families. I'm paraphrasing, but like yeah. that's, that's we all know that as farmers, like after that. So the, spurs, the fertilizer spread, the contracts was made, all the bits and pieces, I'd be chipping away at bills, but the fat in the system is those couple of months. So the opportunity to make that fat in the system, if milk price calls or lifts and stuff, is gained or lost by in that scenario. And what is the deterrent? Cell code. Cell code and lactose are the two things that kill us at the back end of the year. But look, just even just management, it just wrecks fellas' heads. It wrecks people's heads. It's, it's mentally, it's very challenging. Outside of any financial, because when I'm dealing with cases, I never get the financial aspect of it in the sense of people give out to me. It's the it's the mental thing. It wrecks fellas' heads. It yeah, just it takes the enjoyment out of milking. I can't get a fella to milk. I'm afraid of antibiotics going to the tank. I can't just go in and milk the cows, turn off my brain and just milk. You know what I mean? I'm watching yeah. everything. And that oh, that's the one we were really afraid of. If the one with the strap isn't in the last row, why God are you sweating then? Where, you know is, she? I mean? <laughs> Where is she? Oh, sugar. You know, like, 
You know, you, it's just, this is the time of year now when the side is made. You just want to be in that cruise control. Cruise like, control. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the sake of these couple of girls. Very good. So then I suppose people need to kind of sit down and have a look at the recording information too. Ver, ver, like you said, look at the, the cell check report. See, is that infection spreading? A bit of tail tape is a wonderful tool in, in a parallel for marking these codes to identify the problems. Get anti your agate voice up. He, he or she will go through it. And off you go then. Very good. Super stuff, Dan. Thanks a million for coming on today. I'm sure. That's all from this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Dan Crowley for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Stuart Childs and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.